Good morning, members of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators, other colleagues, and all the attendees who have been interested in the subject that we will deal with uh, here today. I would like to start with a short statement here. First of all, this is a um, reason of congratulate. This is uh, our first public event as Iberian chapter. As, as uh, probably some people know, uh, we started as being a Spanish chapter, but we extended our local uh, territories uh, uh, to Portugal and Andorra. Then the proper uh, name uh, should be uh, precisely the Iberian chapter. Second, second, I would like to thank the Institute team uh, of being here today. With the change of the year, our Institute was also involved in a certain transformation with improvements in, I, in ET marketing and team. And um, that uh, makes me a uh, double reason uh, to my duty to thank those responsible for all the support we have received uh, for doing this uh, event real. And especially I would like to thanks to Senorita Katrina Gallagher for her efforts in doing this real. The third, the topic. The topic uh, that we are going to deal with is the result of the initiative of uh, one of, uh, of the members of uh, our steering team uh, in the chapter, Mr. Abdel Kader Kaladi. It refers, uh, the term, to a unique movement, uh, moment in the arbitration proceeding, one in which precisely the claims of the parties have to be consistent with what third parties relevant to the dispute perceive or think about it and how to deal with them uh, by the parties' counselors. As it used to be said, be those third involved human beings that uh, have their own and breath with autonomy, to some extent, they are considered unpredictable. Uh, precisely, Giovanni and Abdel Kader are going to. Uh, uh, talk about it. The forensic dissection with, uh, uh, with the process of cross-examination of witnesses and experts is the uh, core team, a uh, core uh, theme of the event. A fourth, to illustrate some of the readings, uh, to illustrate the audience with some readings, I would like to leave a link to a document with three links uh, um, grab from the uh, CR uh, webpage related precisely with cross-examination that I think would be uh, a support uh, for the words we are going to uh, listen today. Um, the fifth and more important, the panelists precisely. Abdel Kader is a, a fellow member of CR, deeply, deeply experienced in construction contracts and risk management involved with them. Addressing such position in the well worldwide well known construction company, uh, O-H-L-A, I mean, Hola, uh, according to, uh, to the common Spanish way of uh, describing the company. And he's going to talk with uh, Giovanni Di Folco, who is precisely responsible and uh, engineer, civil engineer, uh, president of uh, his own company and uh, a leading authority on, each, on issues such as the one we will address and is uh, explained in the, in, in the announce of, the, of this uh, webinar. Uh, almost the last, I would like to announce uh, uh, the following. Uh, I was thinking to finish my introduction with the announcement that this one of cross-examination will be a second part, will have, sorry, a second part uh, about this matter of dealing with witnesses and experts. Since either before or after uh, this, summer, we plan to organize another event where, where we analyze the scheme of witness conferencing introduced in the Institute as a recommended practice whose guidelines were approved in 2019 in Singapore. Uh, and it's precisely an alternative system to cross-examination uh, 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 system for witness and for experts. Uh, uh, we think the, this should be um, reasonably um, interesting to know both separately. The seventh, uh, the seventh and last is this. I have to give up uh, with uh, the more extensive mention about the uh, witness and conferences because before leaving our protagonists all the time of, for this event, let me say something about the drama we are facing, we are facing in our European branch regional area. I can only say a few words about the news that we have, we have come across this morning. Uh, 
the uh, open outbreak of the conflict between Russia and one of its former republic, today independent state, Ukraine. What to say, but to make my votes for achieving calm and personal respect from the community of CF members in Europe and singularly in both territories involved in the contention. I think, I deeply think that the principles that inspire our institute do more to restore consensus than strengthening the dissension. And precisely, I have listened and read uh, last moments added words from colleagues of me about the issue and on the ordinary people being captured by this uh, naughty conflict. But at the same time, at last, my wish is go to being free, free from maximizing uh, from uh, maximalist uh, positions, which help so little to generate territories of agreement, more necessary than ever precisely today. And now, finish my introduction, and yes, I'll give the floor to our two protagonists of the Kader Giovanni. We want to learn from you both and your deep knowledge from now on. Please, of the Kader, continue. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Giovanni. Good afternoon to you, Abdelkar. Good afternoon. Uh, let's start. Uh, today I have for you some questions about cross-examinations. You will be my guest, and I am honored to be at this site today. So as we know, the rules of evidence are crucial in any dispute resolution. Evidence is critical in cases involving contractual claims. These are categorized into three main types, the real evidence, documentary evidence, and testimony, which are oral evidence. Today, we will focus on testimony evidence, and particularly, I am asking you, Giovanni, about cross-examination. So we will address cross-examination. Would you, would you put the first slide, uh, Giovanni, please? So we will uh, speak about cross-examination, the agenda, yes. we will show the agenda. It, it, it is on. It the, should common be. Law, the common law and civil law approaches to cross-examination. Oh. Not the first, I refer to the program. Giovanni, please. Oh, yes. Okay, so today we'll address cross-examination and its purpose, as you can see on the slide. We will speak about common law and civil law approaches to cross-examinations. The techniques used by parties, councils, and cross examinations. How cross examination, examining a witness of fact, is different compared to cross examining an expert witness, and why civil law jurisdiction lawyers need to be trained at academy level. And then I give you, Giovanni, the time to conclude and tell us whether cross examination is an art. Skillful advocacy or both, which is the title of the, today's event. So let's start. Generally, we hear about examination in chief, cross examination, and re examination. However, it was held that cross examination is beyond any doubt the greatest legal engine ever invented for the di discovery of the truth. So it's the heart of the examination. To begin, Giovanni, would you explain what is cross-examination and what is its purpose in an arbitration? Thank you, Abdel uh, Maybe we should uh, um, remind the uh, audience that uh, uh, for question and answers, it would be better if they use the Q&A uh, icon um, at the top or the bottom of the Zoom uh, instead of the chat, so that then uh, um, Antonio can, can look at them and uh, we can, can choose a few that uh, may be uh, of great interest to the debate. Uh, having said that, Abdelkader, in simple terms, cross-examination is uh, a technique uh, used by lawyers and arbitration specialists um, to both undermine the credibility of the testimony of a witness of fact or 
an expert witness and to use this witness's testimony called by the opposing party or council to instead support matters which your case may rely upon. And, and this is in the essence uh, uh, w what it is. Uh, back to you, um, Dr. Kada. Thank you very much. Uh, so I, I, I'm going back to the second uh, question and the second theme. In your slide, you jump it to the fourth theme, Giovanni. So please Sorry. put the <laughs> slide in the Quite a, quite a, second. a fast Thank finger you. today. Uh, <laughs> so, as, as, as indicated uh, in the agenda and uh, in the second slide, Camelot and civil law approaches to cross-examination, first of all, I must say that there are two dominant legal systems in the world, the common law system and the civil law system. I said dominant, why? Because, of course, there are other legal systems in existence. This, these include customary law, Islamic law, and variantes from the civil uh, law, and so on. The common law legal system includes in its basic procedures the examination of witnesses by the parties, rather than by the tribunal as the civil law systems. This is a big difference. Where this is generally performed by the tribunal in these dominant systems, some talk about differences in approaches to cross-examination between counsel educated and civil law jurisdiction and those educated in common law jurisdictions. However, when one reads guidelines on cross-examination issued by practitioners in the field of international arbitration, such differences do not appear that significant. So, Giovanni, what is your perception on this matter? Well, I'm the kind of if I understood clearly your question. Uh, while differences between uh, various councils, cross examination styles and, and, and techniques naturally exist in practice, uh, in the case of seasoned international arbitration practitioners, there is uh, not much difference between the two legal system uh, or dominant legal system, i.e. common law and uh, civil law systems. Uh, moreover, differences uh, tend to fade away due to years of exposure to different uh, cultures, different uh, legal system. And some practitioners nowadays trained in both civil law and common law system, like, like your good self, for instance. However, it still exists a predominance of common law trained practitioners uh, who are better and more experienced and structured at performing cross-examination than uh, their practitioners from civil law background. Essentially, Autonomous rules tend to develop in, in practice, uh, with the starting point uh, in the common law rules for cross-examinations, yet I would say adapted to the flexibility of international arbitration. Back to you, Abdelkar. Thank, thank you, Giovanni. If, if I have understood well, so, there is no still important to talk about differences in approaches stemming from differences in legal, uh, in legal system, doesn't it, Giovanni? Well, Abdelkader, I would say the most important at this juncture would be talking about best practices. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's also important to talk about biases and, and limitations uh, that less experienced arbitration specialists may have to make them more aware of how to improve uh, their performance, I would say. Civil law lawyers have less opportunity to become familiar with cross-examination in practice, especially with the various techniques. Um, uh, and, and that is relevant to the fact that uh, uh, in litigation before courts in most civil law jurisdiction, 
uh, there isn't any practice or cross-examination. Therefore, uh, I would say that they need to be aware that uh, they must invest the time to learn such techniques. Um, otherwise, they may be disadvantaged uh, when involved in cross-examination in an international arbitration, uh, especially when faced with the opposing counsel um, who is more experienced in their techniques. And um, I think this pretty much covers uh, the, 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 the second point of, of the two uh, system, dominant system. But back to you, Abdel Kadir. Yeah, thank you. So, so, so you, you define the cross-examination, you, you define it. The, uh, so the difference between the two legal systems, the dominant systems. And now I would like... Uh, Abdel Kader. Sorry. Let, let, let me just interrupt. Uh, there are two questions uh, regarding this last issue uh, to Giovanni. First one was given by Cliff Orich. I'll let you. Uh, I'll let you know, and you decide if answering uh, right now or later on. Um, Clive Horridge asks Giovanni, "Can you share your experiences with cross-examination of witnesses during virtual hearings, and how do you think it compares with physical hearings?" I don't know if precisely for this moment or or, or later on uh, later on in the webinar. But connected with this, it's better, uh, Antonio, it's better later on because some question will be interfered with the presentation and the answer. Afterward, right. if we haven't answered everything from this uh, interview, so Giovanni will uh, kindly uh, answer all the questions now or afterwards. Okay, so let, let us finish and then at the end we will uh, answer all the questions. Right. Thank you. So uh, coming back so to uh, ant uh, interviewing uh, Giovanni, I, I said I said that uh, you defined the cross-examination. We spoke a little bit about the differences within the legal systems. Now we, I would like that we enter a little bit of the techniques of cross-examination. So to think about best practices in most, is most important. When presenting a case, much of the evidence will come from the witness. We say that the real the, the, and the, the other one, but all of it will come from the witness. Let us then start talking about best practices when conducting a cross examination in an international arbitration. For each witness, the party or parties, not calling him, of course, will be given the option to cross, to cross examine, option and opportunity. So, Giovanni, should counsel cross-examine all adversary witnesses? Well, um, that, um, Carla, this is a very interesting question. Thank you. Um, because it enters into case management uh, techniques and strategies that obviously uh, counsels uh, hold very close to their chest. Um, my answer is that that would depend on whether the procedural orders provided that a failure to cross-examine implies acceptance of the content of a witness statement or an expert report for that matter. If they do, counsel should cross-examine all. If they don't, there may be cases where uh, it is better not to cross-examine all witnesses of fact. While for Expert witnesses, they should always be cross-examined, in my view, uh, because of uh, the technical support or legal support to uh, the cases. For example, if more witnesses of fact testify on the same set of circumstances, it uh, may be better to cross-examine only one of them, who is more likely to make admissions which would arm the opponent cases. And, and this comes from an, ana an analysis of their written testimony, obviously, uh, which is all part of the, uh, of the preparation to, to a hearing and to the cross-examination. Okay. What you should be aware though, that arbitrators may draw, may draw adverse conclusions from a, a decision from a counsel not to cross-examine a witness of fact. And I 
back to you, Abdul. -Kabir. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. So I understand that there is the option, there is the opportunity. So the council would take advantage or not take advantage. It depends, perhaps, on the circumstances, circumstances, and everything. So, uh, Joanne, the cross examiner should have in mind not only the questions which he intends to ask, I think, but the technique he intends to adopt with each witnesses, because as you said, he can uh, uh, take uh, the option to cross-examine or not. So how can counsel cast doubt on the credibility of a witness? The Kadi here comes the heart of cross-examination. And uh, it, it is an act, it's like acting in a, in a way. Uh, and I've seen barristers over the years to be extremely good at this. To undermine credibility, though, most relevant issues that could be targeted by questions are the, in my view, the independence of a witness, uh, their qualification and practical experience, uh, consistency, I would say, with their previous statements, uh, statements made by other witnesses or documents on file, and with regard to uh, expert witnesses, I would say the instructions they have received and assumption therein, if they've been disclosed, and choice of methodology and correct application thereof. Back to you. Abdelkade, back to you. I have my micro in silence. <laughs> so, uh, I, I said, nice, Giovanni. So it's important to learn how to under, undermine the credibility of a witness whose testimony above all is false or incorrect. So, however, uh, Chuani, witnesses should be treated carefully in cross-examination. Indeed, some witnesses will require patient, differential, gentle cross-examination, while others, the hard ones, we need to be dealt with robustly, even aggressively. Can you give our listeners, the audience, some general do's and don'ts when phrasing cross-examination questions? Thanks, Abdel Kader. Uh, there are indeed the different styles, uh, to, to, to be honest. Uh, uh, and when you practice for a number of years, uh, you tend to, to see which one are more effective. I am going to start uh, by giving you the do's. Uh, the first of this will be regarding preparation, uh, which is essential. I would say know the case, know the procedural rules and the content of the procedural orders, for example, whether questions should be limited to issues which were the subject of the witness statement or not. Have documents uh, within easy reach when you cross-examine. And I identify most important topics for cross-examination. And this is part of your preparation that obviously uh, leads to a hearing. You can prepare uh, detailed questions, but you should be flexible enough to adapt to the answers given by a witness and then go deeper than initially planned into topics if it is appropriate. So obviously here there is an element of being quick on your feet because you will be live and obviously uh, uh, there, are, there are things that you cannot have time to do it because uh, the arbitrary tribunal will regulate that. Uh, take always the witness to paragraphs or pages of documents, exhibits, or their reports at all times prior to ask questions. And I think this uh, uh, it's the preparation part that you got to be uh, well aware of before you get into actual cross-examining a witness of fact or an expert witness. Being brief, however, and this is logical because obviously uh, the time allowed by uh, the arbitral tribunal to the parties, uh, you know, it, it's set. And sometimes uh, you use uh, um, uh, a chess clock arrangements and uh, you use more time and then it will take it away from you at the end. And, 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 and it's very difficult to obtain the sympathy of the arbitral tribunal. But being brief uh, is very important in process animation. I would say that you should use simple language. Try to avoid words that, you know, they are different to complete. Keep uh, the objective of the questioning hidden from the witness. 
ask specific questions to get information a little at a time. You've got to lead the witness where you want. Ask questions that encourage the witness to talk. As you know, it's human nature for witness to keep talking, uh, not knowing when to keep quiet, especially witness of fact. It's different with expert witnesses that they are trained in that and obviously they are very wary of the cross-examiner. Ask leading questions with care. And I'm saying with care because obviously you don't want an objection from your opposing counsel that you're leading uh, the, the, the witness. Uh, and this is to cover important points and examine improbabilities. This is the most delicate part of it. Then ask questions that will require the witness to admit facts favorable to the cross-examiner case. So this is pretty much uh, logical to do it. And as a rule, avoid to ask questions, the answer to which you do not know and may be harmful to your case. It's all about preparation, so do not improvise because it can be seriously dangerous and can turn against you. Um, as a rule, do not let the witness explain. Uh, it'll, it will eat up in your time and obviously you, you will have to become uh, sometimes uh, very, uh, very strict with the witness and stop uh, the, the witness to continue with the explanation because obviously it will take up your time and, and start strong and, and end strong. And this is how the do's. Uh, regarding the don'ts, I would say don't ask questions uh, that were already asked under uh, initial direct examination because you only waste your time and obviously it's limited. Don't divert uh, from the objectives or the cross examination. So improvisation, it's your enemy. Stay with the preparation. Don't give any opportunity for the opposing counsel to interrupt the cross examination. And this is done by being careful how you deal with the witness. Uh, obviously, don't overdo it because then you will invite the opposing counsel to object to your line of, um, of questions. Uh, and then do not create opportunity for ruinous uh, redirect examinations because remember that uh, by agreement of the parties and the tribunal, after you have a cross-examined cross witness, the opposing counsel can redirect so the, the less mistakes you make, uh, the less redirect uh, questions, uh, damaging questions you will get. One important rule, do not argue with the, with the witness. It is counterproductive. And don't say, remember you are under oath because it's a given. I mean, there is really no need to superfluous. Uh, back to you, um, Abdel Kader. Thank, thank you, Giovanni. Really, really is interesting. And uh, speaking about uh, leading a question, and you said also if, even it's dangerous. It can uh, the situation can be uh, against you, can become against you. So, uh, and this for expert for expert uh, or experienced. Uh, Cross examiner, uh, so let alone uh, for non experienced. So, Giovanni, uh, you brings me to uh, uh, to speak about uh, this awkward issue. So, and I wanted really to take an opportunity, this opportunity of your presence here with us, to deal with uh, an awkward issue, which is the inexperienced cross examiners, as I said. It's obvious that the cross examiner must be flexible, as we said and prepared to face any situation while cross-examining the witness. He might find himself having to alter his intended strategy. He will not have much time, as you said, to think about everything new. But he must be prepared to do so, you said also. So to close this last point of our uh, cross-examination techniques, can you give some examples of common mistakes made by inexperienced cross-examiners and how they can be addressed? Of course, I may refer to these mistakes to be used as lesson learns for the future. The color, I, uh, over time, I believe that difficulties always arise with over complicated or convoluted questions. Clarity is everything. 
being concise, being clear, simple language. It's uh, the, the foundation of adequate cross-examination. Irrelevant questions will, will create a situation where you're not going to have only an objection from your opposing counsel, but also from the arbitral tribunal, and that is uh, to be discouraged. Because obviously, when the tribunal uh, finds that your line of questioning is, uh, does not have uh, relevance, uh, that will stop you and, and, and is obviously damaging to your credibility as, as cross-examiner. Uh, also raising inappropriate objections such as leading questions uh, will put you with the back against the wall because you will definitely uh, have either the opposing counsel to object that you are leading. But in most cases, a proactive uh, 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 arbitral tribunal will stop you and will make you uh, realize that you are leading the, the, the witness and that they will not allow that. Because obviously arbitration is not court, there is more flexibility. Um, and I'm back to you and I think uh, we could move on to the uh, fourth item today, uh, which is the differences between cross examining. Uh, thank you, Giovanni. Uh, so now we will tackle and address the differences between cross examining a witness of fact and expert witness. As, so we know that there are two witnesses, one of fact, so he will speak only on what he has seen and he saw, perhaps, in the past, and the other is an expert opinion, his expert. Uh, so, Giovanni, usually expert or uh, skilled witnesses, we call them all skilled witnesses, may give opinion evidence, or perhaps they should give opinion evidence. It's not what he has seen, but his opinion about an issue. But the other witnesses must only speak to facts, what they have seen or what we have saw. Therefore, the cross-examination should be dealt with differently, I think. So, can you explain the differences in approach when preparing cross-examination questions to witness of fact compared with expert witness? That's a very, very interesting question, Abdul Kader. I think as a rule, spend less time on introductory questions with expert witnesses. Uh, you're dealing with uh, very experienced uh, experts most of the time. It's rare that you will be dealing with an inexperienced expert witness. So uh, less introductory question uh, uh, will allow you to have more time to use a, a more direct approach with the expert witness um, in a way that you can take him uh, to parts of his testimony and reports, um, uh, ad additional information as way of uh, charts um, uh, and calculations in his uh, uh, evidence uh, that will allow you to really show the the tribunal whether or not the testimony from the expert witness uh, uh, can be relied upon by the the tribunal, which is obviously the, the essential use of expert witnesses for the arbitral tribunal to be able to rely upon those expertise, uh, you know, during their deliberations. For experts, uh, you should research the expert prior publications. It's very important. All decision, decisions issued uh, in cases where they served as expert, uh, if obviously those are available. Uh, read carefully their instructions uh, if they have disclosed them. Um, but in, in most cases, uh, counsel these days do not allow um, disclosure of uh, expert witness because it could be counterproductive. Uh, but if disclosed, that is to see whether they have influenced their conclusions because counsel, you know, they shouldn't, but they do influence uh, expert witnesses. Uh, do not hesitate, I would say, uh, to ask the expert questions, which may bring to light tight connections between them and the opposing party or counsel, if you have that information, and obtain assistance from your own expert witness. 
to better identify areas of agreement and areas of disagreement between the experts and phrase the technical or legal questions appropriately. Uh, do not wander around the issues, get always straight to the point. Back to you, Andrea Cardo. One more, I, I, I should activate my audio. Uh, so uh, nice, Giovanni, and all when the council is not expert, of course, he's not expert, he can, he cannot, he cannot know everything about expertise. So now specific to cross examination of witnesses of fact, uh, Giovanni, can you advise how to choose the questions so that they relate to matters that support the cross examiner's case? Ricardo, I would say, ask the witness to give their opinion on matters. As, because obviously all they do is giving their opinion. Uh, and uh, they have to obviously stick by it. Because if they change their opinions uh, during cross-examinations, and they have not done so when the arbitral tribunal has asked them if they have a reason to change any of the opinions that are found in their expert reports, then obviously it will put that expert credibility uh, you know, under serious questions. Um, especially, uh, this is important in the event that such an opinion may assist your case or contradict the opposition case. Uh, I would say you also try to formulate questions uh, at all times, which you already know the answers to from documents or contemporary records that you have obviously used for the pleadings, uh, which will allow you to draw attention to discrete discrepancies. The secret is all about finding discrepancies between the, the testimony. Uh, and uh, the more you find them, the more you will undermine the credibility and the reliability of the expert evidence. Back to you, Abdelkan. Sorry again, I, I should activate my audio. Uh, so we have, uh, yes, as, as you said, so it's perfect, you will based on the documents and everything, and you will ask something that you know already the answer. Now, uh, taking into account, so the expert witnesses should almost always be treated with respect. There are experts, there are ex uh, witnesses of opinion. Uh, so we have to respect them and respect also their conclusions because the council have not the skills of this expert. So, uh, uh, and we have to, de to deal with them carefully and gradually before reaching the question, which is designed to elicit a concession from them. So having said this, Giovanni, can you advise how to formulate questions so that they relate to matters that support the cross examiner cases? That's a very interesting one, Abdel Kader. Uh, you know, when, when over the years you, you work in different systems, especially the two dominant ones, uh, inevitably you get across uh, barristers at law from the UK that uh, use a very aggressive approach when they cross-examine. Um, that may well uh, uh, be accepted uh, in, 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 the, in the UK in common law uh, and other common law jurisdictions. However, in, in international arbitrations where 90% of the cases are under, the, under civil law, where the substantive law is civil law, uh, arbitrators do not really appreciate an aggressive approach, especially when cross-examining an expert witness. Uh, I see that as a counsel and I see that uh, as an arbitrator myself, that obviously it annoys me uh, when I see a too aggressive uh, um, approach in cross-examining an expert witness, unless it is required because um, the uh, expert witness is, is clearly shown an element of bias uh, and of non-independence, then obviously you can push the bar, uh, but always in a professional way. Otherwise, you, you tend to uh, have the opposite effect of upsetting the arbitral tribunal, and you don't want to do that. So uh, my advice is, and, and that's what I do normally as counsel, take the witness to and question them on controversial paragraphs within their testimony. Even the best of the experts, because the matters are complex, especially those of a technical nature, 
uh, there will be, uh, uh, you know, aspects that they are not so clear in their testimony. Now, if you are able to identify those controversial paragraphs uh, within a testimony and you take them to them and you ask them to explain, uh, in most of the cases, either they are not able to, or they go overboard and they go against, uh, you know, what they have previously opined on. And that gives you a chance, of obviously, in closing submission, to undermine the credibility and the accuracy of that test. I think pretty much that's it. Back to you, Abdul okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Giovanni. Really, really, it's it's very important what you're saying because we are speaking, we are saying that cross-examination is very difficult. We should be expert. We should be experienced in this field. However, when you uh, ask question to uh, an expert, so of opinion, so it's difficult to, to, to change your strategy because the council has not the same level of this expert of witness. Anyway, so we will, we will leave the audience thinking about uh, this. Now, uh, uh, going a step forward and uh, we will tackle and address the need to introduce training for civil law and uh, lawyers. Uh, so uh, I want to ask you, uh, Giovanni, uh, um, so there is a disadvantage that a council trained in civil law systems may have in terms of familiarity with cross-examination, because we have said is uh, the common law includes this uh, cross-examination in, in their procedures, and they are uh, the, the parties that examine the, the expert, and then the civil law not because the experts are examina uh, examined by the tribunal. So uh, how could this disadvantage be addressed, uh, Giovanni? Well, Abdel Kader, uh, it is indeed a fact uh, that the, the common system, it, it is based um, at court level as well as uh, arbit domestic arbitration on cross-examination. So obviously it's part of the curriculum uh, of a lawyer uh, that is trained on the common law. But over the years, I've realized that cross-examination can be learned, uh, albeit uh, will take many years and, and a lot of practice. For law students uh, in, in, in civil law, and uh, most civil law countries, um, do not include in the curricula, um, you know, any cross examinations. Um, I would advise to participate in cross examinations. Um, I've had some myself. Uh, they are uh, useful practice. Uh, they are very well done. Uh, you will meet uh, very experienced arbitrators as well as counsels. Uh, they they mentor uh, the various teams, and I find them to be very useful. Um, for, for law students, especially on their last year uh, before they graduate. After you become a lawyer, a civil lawyer, uh, I think the, 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 obvious, the obvious advice uh, would be to, if you can, uh, and you have uh, uh, a passion or an inclination towards uh, arbitration or actually uh, you know, dealing with arbitration matter at domestic and international level. Try to watch if you can experience counsel while they prepare and then when they conduct uh, the cross examination, even if you are not a, a, an active participant as a co counsel, but you're allowed in the hearing uh, just to watch. Try to get that opportunity because. Uh, you will learn a lot from an experienced uh, senior counsel uh, when it cross-examined. And, and you should pay particular, particular uh, 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 attention to study the techniques. And obviously, when there is time uh, after the cross-examination, uh, ask questions and, and, uh, uh, and better if you write them down, uh, if you are observing. Uh, um, or if you are part of co-councils, then obviously in, in the moment of recess, uh, ask questions because uh, you will always find a very senior council that will be pleased to answer them. And that is an exceptional transfer on all. 
Thank you, Abdel Kader. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, Giovanni. It was very, very, very interesting, and I am sure there are a lot of questions coming. But before uh, I want that you conclude and you answer the question, uh, which is the title of the event. Uh, Giovanni, would you go to the first slide, which is the event, to uh, so the audience see the title of the event? Today, no, before, yes. So my question is not a question, is a conclusion that you will address Giovanni and uh, answer. The question is, is cross-examination an art, skillful advocacy, or both? The floor is your, uh, uh, Giovanni. Of the kind of saying objectively, uh, if it's an art, uh, um, I would not say so, because obviously a, a, an art uh, is always learned. Even the best of painters, they may have some skills at a young age, but unless they study uh, uh, drawings, um, uh, paintings, obviously uh, they will not uh, um, specialize in the art that they have uh, a particular inclination to it. Uh, so I would not say that uh, it is actually a, a, an art. Um, but what I would say is that uh, it is, uh, you know, a threat in your character as a lawyer or as a, a specialist in arbitration, that you either have it or you don't. Um, I've seen many uh, trained uh, lawyers uh, from uh, common law uh, who also after many years, they never became good at cross-examining, although they had all the training in the world. Um, you may master advocacy, uh, more, more in a common law environment than in a civil law country due to the codified uh, uh, civil codes, uh, which takes a bit of a fantasy away from the lawyer, whereas in a common law, uh, basically with the with with principles of, uh, of not having a codified law, uh, they tend to, um, you know, enlarge the research more and that's where advocacy comes in. Um, however, uh, unless you are gifted for it, and that is a combination of having, uh, you know, um, as a character, as a person, uh, to be someone, obviously, uh, you, you have uh, a gift for presenting, uh, speaking, um, uh, not being uh, uh, afraid of talking in public, uh, and, and obviously being very influential in the way you present yourself. Uh, there are some barristers that when they enter into a hearing, the hair stops. You can see immediately that he means business, him or her. Uh, but uh, after many years of doing it, if you have uh, uh, that gift in yourself and you have applied uh, uh, over the years, uh, uh, the real uh, uh, study of advocacy and its best use combined with the case strategy, uh, then uh, you will become a skillful uh, uh, cross-examiner. So, so it, it is not an art, but is definitely um, a, an inclination to to the technique, and then many years of having acquired a skillful advocacy uh, experience. Thank you. Thank you very much, Giovanni. Uh, I haven't cross-examined you, <laughs> for sure. It was very, very interesting, this, uh, let's say, interview, not debate. Uh, now, uh, I, as I see, uh, thank you for the audience, for their passion, for their interest to this uh, theme. Uh, I see that uh, we have uh, uh, answers, uh, sorry, questions. So I will give the floor to Antonio to lead this uh, part of this uh, event. And uh, really, thank you, thank you very much, Giovanni, and thank you for the audience and the CR who they help us to organize this event. A pleasure, thank you.
Antonio, the floor is yours. Please uh, active your micro. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Abdel Kader and uh, Giovanni, for your explanations and interesting interview. Uh, the true fact is that we have 10 questions uh, written in the, in the question and answers uh, level. And also, the chat was interesting in, in changing uh, comments and and thoughts regarding uh, what uh, Giovanni was uh, uh, explaining and Abdel Kader was uh, pointing out. Let me uh, start for the 10, we have time, yes, we have, to, I think we have time uh, almost for many of the questions. Um, and uh, starting with a point which was very uh, little uh, mentioned along the con your conversation. Uh, Clive Horwich, um, ask the following uh, to Giovanni. Uh, can you share your experiences with cross examination of witnesses during virtual hearings? And how do you think it compares with physical hearings? And connected with this, if there's also a difference uh, due to the different context in which uh, the uh, cross examination should be given depending on if you are subject to a common law or a civil law approaches. This last uh, was given by Nazareth Romero and connected with the previous one of Clive uh, Horish. So then, comparisons mm -hmm. between physical and virtual, civil law and, uh, and uh, common law, and attitude and performance with the witnesses and experts. Thank you, Antonio. Uh, two very interesting questions. Uh, as you all know, uh, over the past years, uh, due to the pandemic, uh, the virtual hearings became the necessary evil. I mean, without the old uh, justice system, it would have come to a halt. Uh, so we all learned how to use, uh, you know, a virtual uh, uh, basis to conduct virtual hearings. Hmm. However, the difference uh, between uh, an in-person hearing and uh, a virtual hearing when it comes to cross-examination is substantial. Mm. And that is due to the fact that uh, in person, you are able to read the room because obviously you watch facial expressions of the arbitrators or your opposing counsel of the opposing expert witnesses. Mm. And uh, if you're good at reading, uh, you know, um, expressions, um, the way that people move their hands, um, you're also able to understand whether or not they are in, they're having any difficulties uh, if you hit to the point. Whereas um, in a uh, visual hearing, it, it, it becomes very difficult to do that, um, especially mm. because uh, objections are very difficult to do. Uh, mm. You know, you've got to raise your yellow hand uh, you, with the hope that the arbitrator sees it. Indeed. Uh, and sometimes it takes a while and then you do the objection too late uh, when it would have not the same effect as if uh, you were in person where, mm -hmm. you know, immediately you stop because obviously mm -hmm. you hear talking and you hear objection, then mm -hmm. um, um, you, you halt. Mm -hmm. and, and that is... Uh, 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 you know, the essential part of where, uh, whereby I prefer, obviously, uh, without any hesitation to say, you cannot replace in-person hearings and in-person cross-examinations. It's mm -hmm. far more efficient. Regarding uh, uh, common law and, and civil law, um, well, if, you, if you're dealing in common law, uh, you will be dealing with a domestic type of arbitration because you will be in a common law environment and they have the, the various procedures so it's very uh, it's very structured the style on their customs um, whereas in civil law uh, you you will you will be dealing uh, either international or domestic in domestic you wouldn't do that because you will write your questions and then you will receive written answers so though, so though there, there is no really cross examination in domestic mm -hmm. arbitration and court in civil law. However, uh, if the substantive law uh, is a civil law and you are within uh, the environment of international arbitration, 
um, you you may find very difficult to deal with the cross examination virtually. It 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 will have a, an added layer of difficulty uh, uh, because of the relay. Uh, sometimes the issues with the microphones, um, the fact that there may be three arbitrators and they they, they need uh, to discuss and they stop you halfway. Uh, and then obviously you you lose your line of thought and and, and the tempo that you were using obviously to uh, uh, to try to hit the point on on a on a uh, or, or on a witness that was not that friendly uh, in in replying uh, uh, to the line question maybe you were put to that thank you mm -hmm. thank you Giovanni mm. so another one um. Beatriz Rodriguez de la Flor asked us the following. Uh, one of the goals of cross-examination is found contradiction discrepancies in the documentation, information, facts from the parties and clarify soon, but efficiency. So maybe answers of yes or no. It could not be very helpful at the end. This is a comment. And um, connected with that, Cristiana Roscoyu, uh, ask Giovanni this one. From your experience, how is the re-examination conducted and how much is taken into account for recovering of the damage of a witness's credibility? Thank you, Antonio. Uh, well, it's very difficult within uh, international arbitration to obtain yes or no answers, even if you are very adamant uh, to do the the uh, an experienced expert will find a way to uh, not answer the yes and no he, he will make you waste time and he will go to parts of his report and uh, if he's very skillful uh, you will not be able to get a yes or no answer um, it, it is very rare that you will get the assistance to the arbitral tribunal uh, whereby the arbitral tribunal will instruct the the the, the witness to give a yes or no answer to a previous question, mm. uh, uh, but it is rare. Um, mm. The you know the, the the technique of yes or no answer it's more acceptable if you if you are in a common law environment, like if you are doing a, 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 a cross examination in, in in the UK. Uh, there, um, you know, you will have the assistance of the arbitral tribunal or the judge for that matter. Uh, but in international arbitration, it's quite difficult because the arbitrators are trained to allow uh, a certain level of flexibility uh, mm -hmm. just to ensure that, uh, you know, the, the uh, arbitration uh, is seen as a more flexible uh, medium of, uh, um, of dispute resolution. Regarding uh, redirect, uh, from my experience, uh, you get uh, always very little time to redirect. Like, for instance, if the parties in the arbitral tribunal have agreed within the time allowed uh, for mm. the hearing, it can be several days, uh, mm. that the cross-examination can go as far as one hour or, or more, it's very rare that you get the redirect uh, or re-examination as put by Cristiano Roscoe, um, uh, which is a friend, and, and uh, I, I use this opportunity to say hello to her, uh, you will never get more than 15, 20 minutes to redirect. And it's very difficult uh, to try to, uh, in this redress uh, period of time, to recover everything. So you're going to be very skillful to only deal with matters of major importance that, as counsel, you feel could be damaging and, and, and cannot be really uh, resolved in a post hearing brief. So you've got to be really on your toes. You've got to know what you're doing. You've got to know your case because you will have a very little time. And if you do not do right, you will not remove the impression uh, of the arbitral tribunal that the, the, your uh, witness, because obviously when you redress, you redress your own witness, uh, it lacked credibility. Thank you. Yeah, uh, clear. Um Precisely with this uh, issue about the the, the 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 shortness in time to get any kind of achievement uh, for a 
for a good construction and fundament for your positions. Uh, Marco Meselinovic, uh, sorry if I pronounced wrongly, uh, ask the following, do tribunals find it more helpful to adopt a civil law style approach by, he asked, requiring all questions to be submitted to the tribunals first? Well, Marco, in international arbitration, uh, no. Uh, it is never used as, uh, as a practice. Arbitral tribunals uh, will not ask for uh, the, uh, the question to be submitted to the arbitral tribunal. Mm. It, it, is, it is a practice that will become the productive. Mm -hmm. And not, not, not say in the same line, but precisely re related with this, um, uh, Dosan Abranovsky asked to Giovanni if uh, the style of cross-examination preferable by uh, you, Giovanni, uh, is either aggressive and provocative or opposite, calm with respect to the witness. Well, in fact, uh, I should advise Dosan that one of the rules of CIA regarding this point is clearly preferable the second one instead of the first. Do not like to match tribunals, to be very, uh, uh, let me use this word, bullish with uh, witnesses. It's unpolite, any fun. But your opinion, Giovanni? Well, uh, Dusani uh, and Antonio, you will be surprised of how much you can get by being cordial, professional, and uh, uh, avoiding any animosity. Yeah, it is. Although, although uh, at times comes very difficult, you may mm -hmm. find uh, a, a, an expert witness uh, that uh, is uh, not independent, mm -hmm. and obviously he will uh, uh, hijack uh, your time. Uh, and there are times that obviously you will have to ask the arbitral tribunal mm -hmm. uh, to instruct the the, the witness uh, to uh, um, stick to the uh, questions and answer uh, in uh, as short as time possible, uh, because otherwise it will be counterproductive. Because uh, if you're not able to finish your cross examination, an arbitral tribunal has the duty to have an extra time until the counsel has been able to uh, finish his cross examination and, and say that uh, he's satisfied that he has a no more question for the witness. Otherwise, it can be a, a, a serious procedural uh, mistake, uh, uh, you know, cutting a, a cross examination with counsel short. Well, continue with the, uh, another question. Marley Milay Honga uh, made this statement. It is commonly known that the question of cross-examination should be the leading one and ask. However, would it be allowed to ask an open question in case where no defense-friendly answer could, could help the witness and any answers will eventually help the case? Let me just uh, try to understand the question. I'm just reading it in a QA. Uh, I don't know if I'm sure that I've understood the question from my home. Um, however, it could be, a, it could be a, something. The, the techniques that uh, an experienced counsel uh, can use during cross examination are, are various. Uh, you may uh, obviously have uh, uh, the, uh, the possibility um, to have the help of the arbitral tribunal as well. Uh, mm. and, and uh, um, in, in some cases, the arbitral tribunal comes in to help and they formulate the questions in the way they have understood. Mm. And uh, they ask then the witness to, um, mm. to, to reply to that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, it, it, you know, it, it, there is quite a, a wide uh, 
uh, array of, uh, of techniques that uh, an experienced uh, council can use. And one of those is obviously to look at the arbitral tribunal and saying, I'm going to need a bit of help here because I'm not getting the answer uh, to my questions. Hmm. And then the arbitral tribunal will intervene. Hmm. Yeah, it could be the case. Um, uh, connected with uh, what I mentioned at the very beginning and uh, regarding um, single session, several witnesses. There's one of Sergio Arroyo Lopez and ask to Giovanni also, is there any special element to be considered when facing hot Cuban expert witnesses? Well, first of all, uh, hola Sergio, we haven't, we haven't spoken for quite some time. Mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of friends uh, today mm -hmm. I'm right. organizing. Right. Uh, like very, inter very interesting question from Sergio. You know, a hot tubbing is something that in the past years uh, was not really uh, taken um, with any seriousness by any arbitral tribunal. Actually, they were more annoyed by it to try anything else. But over time, they was, the arbitrators have, uh, have realized that uh, it, it is uh, uh, a lifesaver because it can really uh, uh, allow the arbitral tribunal to put questions because in a hot tubbing, the questions are put by the arbitral tribunal and then the councils uh, may, uh, uh, you know, do additional questions uh, if allowed by the arbitral tribunal. But it is essentially for the benefit of the arbitral tribunal to have two or three experts in front of them and ask questions and to see the readiness, the accuracy uh, of the expert witness uh, uh, in order for them to infer, obviously, on, on the basis of who gives the most satisfactory answer, who is more prepared, who is more keen to really show the arbitral tribunal that he has a duty towards the arbitral tribunal and not to the parties that uh, has engaged that expert witness. But the element to be considered uh, in, uh, in a hot tubbing is uh, uh, how your expert witness will fare under a number of questions that will come from an arbitral tribunal or three arbitrators, which can be uh, really uh, 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 basically the basis for uh, a, a change of the whole opinion of the arbitral tribunal to an expert. So if it is agreed that all tabbing should be used, uh, you as counsel, you really need to be sure that your expert has done it before, can do it, and the case is strong enough for that would do it. Because if you are not sure that your expert is going to fare well, you know, under a, a, an array, a, a of many questions from three arbitrators, and they could be all very three very active. They may have many questions, and they can ask a follow-up questions, and they may even allow the council to intervene after that they ask the question and they receive the answers. Then you should not go for otabing. You should obviously uh, stay uh, away. And otabing can only be allowed if the the parties agree and the arbitral tribunal allows it. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Uh, well, there's a few space to, few room to say that Giovanni was not an expert in this issue, as you, uh, as the audience can expect. And there's, um, if I'm not wrong, there's only two questions left uh, to finish in the list. One of them is, uh, is given by an uh, anonymous spectator, a uh, uh, war game, I mean, um, name, I mean. Uh, she asked uh, a kind of issue about the procedure and the role plays. Uh, here's a state. Um, nothing than examination in chief and cross-examination are separate. Question, is cross-examination being used to cover both in this talk? So then, a question about procedures. Well, uh, absolutely not. Uh, you know, the, the, the principle of uh, examination in chief is not used in arbitration because uh, it, it's a matter of, uh, uh, of litigation in criminal, in criminal cases under criminal law. Normally, under criminal law, you would put your own witness and you do an examination in chief. 
to see that uh, it is truthful, the witness, and obviously can uh, uh, draw the sympathy of the jury, so a jury trial, uh, nothing to do with arbitration. The, the examination chief in arbitration does not exist. Uh, it is very rare that uh, um, a counsel will ask uh, too many questions before his expert witness or witness of fact will undergo cross-examination from a policy counsel. Uh, what uh, may happen is that uh, the parties in the tribunal allow expert witness or uh, a witness of fact in order to test the, um, the historical memory uh, to see if it's accurate. Uh, they will allow them in their own words to present their testimony. Okay. Right. Right. Uh, and in some cases, if there is adequate time, uh, an arbitral tribunal will allow. And that is a, a good test because the, 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 the testimony will not be done by reading your own, uh, 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 um, obviously, uh, expert uh, 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 witness of fact uh, testimony report. Uh, you will have to speak freely, and that uh, will allow the arbitral tribunal to see how well prepared you are and how good is your historical memory if you were a project participant, like a project director on a construction site, for instance, or, or a designer, uh, a chief design officer <laughs> in a design dispute. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously, uh, th this is what happens. Uh, and But the clever uh, councils uh, and arbitrators uh, will basically allow uh, a, only the the counsel presenting his uh, uh, expert witness or witness of fact, and then uh, 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 basically uh, giving the floor to uh, the cross examiners immediately uh, so that they will save time and they may have more time in redirect. Mm -hmm. Well, um, Abdel Kader is not going to go away without a question for him, a direct one. Abdel Kader is Castellano Arturo, uh, his name, who ask Abdel Kader. Uh, first of all, I uh, appreciate the current interview and presentation you both did, and uh, uh, he comment. Um, you emphasize, Abdel Kader, the difference between common law and civil law when cross-examining parties, councils, or jury. The question, uh, Kayan ask if you would say that one system might produce better outcomes than the other, and, and, and I add this, depending on the matter in this case, or depending, depending on the uh, jurisdiction where you uh, solve the dispute. Yes, this is another question or what? Sorry. The, 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 the question is the question, Arturo. Ah, can I add okay. to regarding okay. with this? Okay. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Antonio. Thank you, Arturo. Uh, Arturo, uh, I know Arturo very well. He's the contract manager of uh, one of our projects. And Arturo, uh, for the audience, I will announce that he will be my guest in June or July. He's a great guy in uh, FIDI contracts, and he will speak about his uh, experience in FIDI and above all uh, lesson learned uh, from the experience of one of the biggest projects we had. We will announce this in the next, uh, uh, the chapter meet with. Uh, coming back to the question, and uh, thank you for your comment that it was a great event. This is thank you to Giovanni and his presentation. Uh, coming back to the question, uh, I said, yes, there is a difference between the common law and civil law, and uh, we are not now to enter into detail in the common law and civil law, but speaking about cross examination or cross uh, examin uh, examining a witness, it's very interesting to say, as Giovanni mentioned, that the common law includes these procedures, uh, includes the cross-examination in their procedures. Instead, the civil law, no. Uh, as, uh, as I said, uh, the civil law uh, questions or examining witnesses are performed by the tribunal. So about it might produce better outcomes, uh, so I would say that one system might produce better outcomes than the other. I'm not sure, but it's, the, it's important to say that the common law, uh, uh, the, the concepts of common law were, are trained, very, very well trained for cross-examining. Examining. So the outcome should be better normally. 
But if there is a, a civil lawyer well trained and experienced, so I think the, uh, the outcome would be the same. And Giovanni mentioned in one of what questions, he said, the difference could be played down a little bit. I don't know if Giovanni uh, subscribed my, uh, uh, my uh, answer. Hmm. Well, uh, Abdelkader, uh, you know, when we're talking about international arbitration, uh, a cross examination uh, can be applied whether the substantive law is common law oh, or civil law. So, uh, you know, you will have uh, lawyers uh, uh, that uh, um, will have to provide a cross examination uh, uh, under a, a system of law or the other. Uh, and uh, uh, there, obviously, uh, I have seen uh, in, a, in an entirely common law approach where you will find opposing counsels that uh, are common law lawyers. Uh, I've seen always a better results from uh, them than uh, a mix of common law lawyer and uh, civil law lawyers, uh, where um, in, in most cases the civil law lawyers will, 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 will not be as effective as a common law lawyer in cross yes. because uh, unless you're really gifted, uh, you know, the years of training that the common law lawyers have from university, uh, you, you cannot uh, undermine that. Uh, you know, it's experience is everything, practice is everything. Uh, you know, you will become a good counsel in presenting, uh, not from your first arbitration, even if you're super gifted. You need several arbitration and many years of practice to get good at this. Exactly, Giovanni. Uh, that's, what, uh, that's what I said. So you should be very, very trained and you have a lot of experience, experience to equal more or less so, uh, a common law uh, counsel or lawyer. And that it comes from the uh, systems, of course, because one... Uh, it, but uh, uh, the questions, uh, Giovanni, uh, come from the counsel anyway. And the civil law, and that's a rhetoric question, not so don't answer Giovanni, uh, a rhetoric question is the arbitrator could be a counsel, a counsel could be arbitrator, of course. So, and in, in somehow, if the civil law uh, counsel should give its questions to the tribunal to ask them, so he's trained it anyway. But as you said, as you said, common law, the, 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 the outcome should be better from the common law counsels. So, and I close with this the answer to Arturo. I hope that I answer. Mm -hmm. uh, precisely with your answer, the last one in the last moment by Eva Camara Garcia would be considered already answered. The, the question was, can you share any tip on how a lawyer should prepare himself, herself, in advance of a cross-examination? Well, clearly Giovanni and Abdelkader has pointed out what to do, constance, experience, and um, hard work. But if you would like to... Giovanni, you want to say something else? Do you want to add something, Giovanni? Uh, well, just not to reiterate, uh, obviously uh, pre preparation is everything. Uh, case management strategy and advocacy are the two aspects uh, that can make or break a, a case uh, from a counsel point of view. Uh, most arbitrators are, are councils, and most councils are arbitrators. Yes. It is just the nature of the beast. Um, and, and then you learn how to change heads, obviously, over the years. Uh, uh, but I mean, uh, the, the point is uh, to, to prepare, uh, you've got to have a strategy, uh, like in any profession. Hmm. And the case of strategy, uh, which obviously uh, it, it is not just decided by counsel, but also by client that ties you, uh, is everything. Uh, because without a strategy, uh, you, you cannot set the pace where you want the case to go and what uh, uh, the inference of the arbitral tribunal should be in order that you may have a, a, a successful outcome out of your case. Uh, so I think it's all about strategy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I think with this, 
uh, words by Giovanni and Abdel Kader, we could do for finished this webinar. I really appreciate your your interventions, your comments, on the way in which you have the have have led the, uh, the the event, the webinar, and you, Giovanni, spreading your knowledge among us. Um, a short. Um, I, I don't know if you would like to add uh, something to this as the last step, and uh, in case Giovanni Abdel Kader. No, nothing to say. Uh... From my part, thank you for the audience. Thank you for everybody. Thank you, Antonio. Thank you, Giovanni, for accepting uh, to participate in this event. It was very, very interesting. Uh, very, very interesting. And uh, that's all. Thank you for the CRB also, they, uh, for the organization, uh, Catriona uh, particularly. And that's all. Thank you for you, Antonio. Mm. Many thanks, Antonio and Abdel Kader, for inviting me. I am truly honored that uh, I, I did participate in the first webinar uh, of the year. Um, uh, and uh, I will look forward to see uh, other webinars and, uh, and, to, and to watch them with uh, great interest. And uh, many thanks to the uh, Chartered Institute of Arbitrators as a whole, that it, it, it is, uh, w without any doubt, one of the most uh, um, well-managed organizations uh, uh, in the development of arbitration practice in the world. Thank you. Indeed. Uh, thank you, you too. Um, last uh, announce from me to end this uh, broadcasting, which is tomorrow morning, early in the morning for many people, I uh, will uh, have an encounter with uh, the Asociación uh, para el Fomento del Arbitraje in Barcelona, uh, where we are going to talk about the, uh, the CR. We are going to have an official presentation to the uh, 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 Low Bar Association in Barcelona. And we are going to talk about the Iberian chapter, what was the uh, ICR, what are we doing uh, in, in the CR as Iberian chapter, what are our uh, scopes, and what challenges are we going to face uh, about the industry about and about the caring of our members of CR. So with this, I think this is enough for us, and I receive my salutation to all. Thank you, audience. And we give this uh, seminar by ending. Thank Bye. You. Bye to all. Bye.